Okay, today we're going to be tying something that I like to call the SDF, or smallmouth Dorito fly, and the name will become apparent as we uh, get farther along to some of the materials. Uh, it's a good fly pattern. It's really effective in small, clear creeks and streams that hold smallmouth. Uh, it has a, a lot of flash with a very minimal amount of material. Uh, it's tied very similar to a deceiver with a couple of differences uh, that we'll see later on. So uh, first thing we're going to do is we're going to tie, I'm going to use a Gamagatsu B10S size 4. Uh, that's a maybe a little bit of a light wire for this this pattern. It um, is good if you also tie it on like a saltwater hook, something with a slightly thicker wire uh, than this, but I, I want to tie this particular fly today uh, a little bit lighter than I normally do. Thread I'm going to be using is a uh, UTC 140. Um, you can use pretty much any of your your favorite thread. I'm I'm using white today. Uh, you can go thicker if you want, but I like again. Uh, I'm trying to tie this as sparse as I can, and I really want to avoid uh, build up of a, a bulky head. Um, so a little bit thinner is is better. You still want to have a little bit of strength to this as you uh, secure some of these materials. And for that reason, you probably want to go too light. All right. Uh, so we've laid our, our thread base down uh, to about where we normally do on uh, these B10S hooks. Uh, again, they have a slightly different profile, so we don't go all the way back to where the barb is that we crushed down. We, we kind of go almost to the hook point itself. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to use some crinkle or crystal flash. This is a pearl color. Uh, a lot of the patterns that I'm using that are pearl have a slight green iridescence to them. I really like that color. I think it's something that works really well and that the smallmouth really respond to. Um, but again, you know, as with anything, you can experiment with colors if you want for your area or, um, you know, for your tastes. So for this, what we're going to do is we're going to use just one, one side of a length, so you know, half of a, a total strand. And trim it. <clears throat> and I want this to end up being in uh, about four pieces. So I'm going to cut it in half. And let's see if this is long enough. Sometimes it is, sometimes it isn't. So if we fold in half, check our length. Yeah, that'll be perfect. Just kind of position it where I want it. And that's good and secured. All right, so bring my, my thread back and get ready. Uh, so because for the, uh, the next we're going to go into some saddle hackle in white. And for this I've got two pieces kind of pre-selected. I'm actually not going to worry about measuring based on hook length or anything like that. I just kind of want this to end just before the length of uh, that crystal flash. So I'm just going to kind of size it up, trim it. Flatten it just a tad. And go ahead and lay that down. All right, where I want it. I'm going to do this first wrap or two a little bit light. And then do the front wraps a little bit heavier. Hackle's just one of those things. Because this is a, um, I'm not really worried about shiny side or dull side. Since it's a solid color, I'm going to go ahead and flip it around. Just try to get it to lay better. <clears throat> it doesn't matter if it ends up going sideways on you. 
the fish won't care. Because when it gets wet, it all slumps down anyway. Alright, so the other side. Just trying to do this about the same length as the other one. Trying to make it as symmetrical as I can. Again, if it's not perfect, don't worry about it. It just means it looks more wounded. The fish are going to be more likely to seize onto it. All right, that's pretty good. So now I'm ready to go ahead and put on uh, what I'm gonna do for kind of a interior underbody. Uh, and that's a little bit of this, this is a prism flash, again, pearl uh, with that, that green iridescence. But um, you know, you really can use anything, uh, any type of dubbing that you want. I just, I wanted something with some more sparkle. Since I'm tying this more sparse, occasionally you can see down to the hook shank. I wanted something that really had a good shine. It's all about having flash. Um, so anyway, I've got my dubbing. And uh, you can use any dubbing that you want. It's just about making sure you have something with, I don't know, some type of sparkle, some type of flash. You know, small mouth. They... Uh, react to a lot of different things. They are a visual predator. When you're in those small creeks and streams that are so clear, you know, that, that flash can help really turn them on. So standard dubbing noodle. And get that started. Give it a turn. And I'm not going to come all the way up. I only want to go to about there. Nice thing with this prism dubbing is you can actually just pull it off. All right, our dubbing is now on. Uh, so the next part that I want to do is I actually want to put in really what's going to kind of be like a, a gill flash or a lateral flash on uh, the sides of this. And I'm going to use um, a little bit of a different material, actually, uh, to do this. And that is going to be... <laughs> A bag of Doritos on the inside has a very nice shiny silvery color and um, you know you can cut it to any size that you want so you really have opportunities to do things with this that you can't with the most fly tying materials that you find so what I'll do is I'll cut it into a, uh, a thin strip and it's really nice shiny side on one side and the other side you get this red and that's why I like using the Doritos bag because you get this red so as this flutters, and, and it does, it, it actually vibrates. Uh, and you'll see when I tie it, there'll be a, a length that'll come down. Um, it, you know, will show like that red underside. It will also providing a, an actual vibration in the, uh, in the water. You'll hear it when you cast it too. Uh, just remember, the water is just a thicker form of the air from a density perspective, right? So if you're hearing something flutter in the air, you can expect it to be doing something similar in the water. So to prepare this, what we're going to do is I'm just going to cut one side like this. So what I've done is just made a little bit of a point and then I want to lay this along the hook shank to the point where, you know, it's kind of near the end of where my dubbing is. And this can be a little bit interesting to, to tie on, um, especially since it's you know a little bit thicker than some other flash you may have uh, worked with before. So the key to this is loose wraps. It's kind of like one, two, you know, I'm just, I'm not actually pulling it, I'm just letting the weight of the bobbin kind of pull it. And that's actually gonna pinch it all the way around the hook shank. So now I just put two more on with a little bit more pressure and that results in this real nice, kind of uh, not crinkled or anything like that, layer of 
my flash right down. Now I'll put a couple wraps on to secure it. Kind of pull this back. And the cool thing about this this stuff is actually quite delicate once you nick it. Um, it's really strong in some ways and really uh, delicate in others, so it's kind of unique. And you can actually lay that back down flat. And that's going to secure really nicely. And it gives you, you know, your next piece ready to go. Nice thing about Dorito bags is, well, if you run out of material, it's a great excuse to go get more. Alright, so we're going to do the same thing. One kind of loose wrap and two loose wraps, just kind of letting the weight of the bobbin hold it down. And then we're going to put on two more slightly stronger wraps. Take my material, just kind of let it bend back. Give it a nick. And pull it. Now when I actually had a cut, that's fine and all that lays flat. So then what you can do is just kind of go along and clean that up. And that cleans up real nicely. Doesn't really introduce any issues for balk or, or tape or, or anything or um, anything like that. And uh, now we're ready for our, our next material. And we've got this really great lateral flash uh, that you can see that from you know, 40, 50, 60 feet away sometimes if the water's real clear. And the fish see it too. I've seen them come all the way across the creek for it. It's, it's great. Uh, so now what we're ready to do is we're ready to start building the top and bottom of this. And we're going to do it um, kind of similar to how you would with like a, a clouser or a deceiver. In fact, this is a very deceiver-like fly, right? And the way that we've laid out some of the materials. And so I'm going to be using three different color of bucktail from two different pieces of bucktail. Um, so we're going to use... Uh, red, and we're going to use this first, and then we're actually going to go into a white, and we're going to use the backside of the white as well. So some people will actually go through and cut all this off. I don't, because uh, for this fly specifically. Um, but we're going to use this red, and you notice my this is a really gnarly piece. In fact, I've already cut pretty much all of the good pieces off of this. So usually you get to this point, this is all more hollow, not really great for tying like a clouser or a deceiver because it'll start uh, flaring on you and you have a tendency to want to just chuck this piece and, and that's fine. Um, but I'm actually going to utilize it. So I don't want these pieces down here because they're a little bit too hollow, but this section right here is perfect and I don't need a lot because what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in some more red. And this makes really kind of neat effect. Um, and that's about all I'm looking for. Not a lot. Now, I'm not worried about this bit back here. I'm actually more concerned with this part. So it's a little bit different than how you'll normally tie it. You'll actually I'm going to be tying like that. Um, so I want to... So I've transferred it over, so I've got the butt ends sticking back where normally I would have the other side. And I'm going to kind of grab those butt ends towards the, the tips as best I can manage. And I'm not going to worry about trimming this. I'm going to trim that here in just a minute. Um, so now I'm just going to lay it down. And I'm going to put on loose wrap, second wrap a little bit tighter, third wrap. And then we're just going to leave it like that. Because it's going to allow me to adjust it if I need to. You know, it's not too many wraps that I can't pull it. And so I want it kind of where it's going back towards the hook point. Um, I got it in position. Just put two more wraps in to secure it. And then I can come in and trim off some excess. Not the normal way to tie in bucktail, I'll be honest. But it works. And uh, for this fly, it works really well. So we're just going to advance the thread back, and I'm going to do the same thing on the other side.
I'm just going to go through and, and really even up the ends. And that gives a really nice kind of sharp gill plate, if you will. All right, so that's in. And I'm just going to go ahead and clean that up, come back just a bit. And you can see it wants to flare a little bit. And I'm okay with that. Because if it's flaring slightly, that just makes it more like a gill plate. And um, it's going to cause a little bit more vibration. It's one of the reasons why I don't mind using that section of the bucktail. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and get into our white. And like I said, we're actually going to use the, uh, the back side as well. I'm going to tie on the um, top of this fly first, and then I'm going to uh, work on the underside and, um, and finish up down there. So let's go ahead and use our top color, which is going to be a darker color. It's going to be this, this brown stuff. Um, if you've never worked with the back side of the bucktail before, it's very much the same way as the side that we're all used to, to working with. Where down here, it's still hollow. So you want to stay away from that because it will spin and flare on you. Um, and then up here, it's it's more wispy. Uh, something that's different than down here is that this hair kind of changes the gradient all the way through. So kind of feel through, find the right consistency that you want. I like the thinner hairs. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take this and I'm going to let it get rid of it, that one. I'm going to let it kind of come back about three quarter. So I've got it measured. I'll go ahead and I'll cut it. And then tie it down. And I tie it the same like I do any other bucktail. That doesn't change. So again, pulling up on my wraps. Okay. Now I'm gonna fix that taper when I put in the next section. So that's it coming back. Now we can go ahead and we can work on the bottom. That's gonna be our white. Again, standard standard bait fish coloring, right? Do the light side on the bottom, dark side on the top. And you notice I'm not using a ton here. Small fly, right? Size four. Tied very sparse. Pinch that down. Put that back. I had some threads come apart on me. There we go. And so that actually lays back quite nicely. And we're kind of building that Clouser classic deceiver type shape, right? where it's real wide here, real narrow here. It's a very minnow-like, baitfish-like presentation. All right, um, so the last thing that I wanna do is I wanna put on some red crinkle flash. I'm all about the red and the gill in this. So I'm gonna take this crinkle flash and pull it out. I actually prefer to keep it in the package like this versus pulling it all the way out. This allows me to come in and snip it. Um, and then I'm going to take this and make it into multiple. I just don't need it that long. Um, I don't feel like wasting four or five or so strands when I'm only interested in a section that's maybe a quarter of the length um, that actually lasts. So, so even that's too long. If I fold it in half, then that looks right. So, I what, quartered it, I think. Just tuck it underneath, fold it around. Bring it straight down. I don't need to secure this too heavy. A couple of wraps will be fine because we're going to put an epoxy head on this. And then I kind of draw all these strands back together, come in, kind of have it close to the other gill, and just cut it. 
It's not heavy on the flash, but enough. It'll provide a sparkle. And so now I can go ahead and just clean this up a little. I'll flip the fly around. Make sure I've got everything secure up here. There we go. Build that back. Now it's time to arrange anything if you need to. And then I'm gonna go ahead and um, flatten. This is really good when you're putting on eyes, right? And, and honestly, we work so hard to build a taper and profile this fly, right? Where it's fat, thin. Why would we have a big round end of it? I want to make sure it's flat and then fat or thin and fat, whatever you want to call it. Um, and so now I want to do that though before I whip finish because if you whip finish and then flatten, sometimes you can actually undo the whip finish, which is not fun. So I'll just do a three turn whip finish. Pull that tight. Like I said, we're going to put eyes on this and then we're going to epoxy the head, so I'm not overly concerned. So for the eyes, uh, I'm going to use these uh, Mirage eyes, sticky eyes. Uh, these are 1 8 inch, if that makes a difference to you. The reason why I like the Mirage, and you can see it, one, has a little bit of the green iridescence, right? I've got a theme built on with this fly. Um, and they've got a really good, uh, very shiny backing. So these eyes reflect a lot of light. And that's what this fly is about. Small fly, lots of flash. Something that, if I'm a smallmouth, I, I can't ignore that. So I'm not worried about having these where they're not going to move. But I am concerned about making sure that they're positioned where I want them and I want them kind of symmetrical. Uh, that's going to help the head slice through. So yeah, I don't mind them sticking up a little bit because that's just going to give me a place to catch my UV. Uh, I'm using a, a thick, you can use you know whatever is your favorite I happen to like the loon, but I think this stuff is all fairly similar. Some of it's different, but uh, I like the thick for this fly for exactly the purpose that I'm doing right now. And that's getting it um, with that round hump to really set these eyes in. I'm only going to do this for a few seconds. And I'm going to flip the fly over and do it for a few more. And then I'll actually go through and, and cure the fly. More. Make sure I really get this up. Underneath, around the eyes, and you let this, you know, because it won't harden right until you hit it with the UV light. So if you need to man manipulate it, now is the time. All right, so go ahead and hit that for a few seconds. Gone out with people that are fishing, you know, traditional uh, spin tackle, and in those small creeks and streams, you know, they just they can't keep up. That's one area where I think with smallmouth fishing, the, the fly rod has really got an advantage. Between this and a popper, you don't need anything else. Um, always nice to have other things in the tackle box, but or in the fly box. It's not needed most of the time. All right, so this is just some high gloss head cement. Uh, you can put on whatever formula 
float your boat. But I like to always put on a head cement after I've put on my UV. And that's because the UV is slightly tacky. I know I could just take it, stick it out in the sun, all that tackiness goes away. But I also know that if I put on a little bit of uh, head cement around it, then that's not a problem. It is cured. And this way I'm putting the head cement over the, uh, the actual outside of the eyes as well. Protects the eyes and gives it a nice luster. And, uh, and again, it's a high gloss, right? So all we're doing is adding to the overall shine of the fly. So, got one little spot left. And then it's just a matter of letting it dry. And that's basically all there is to it. And one thing that you can do if you want is you can add in stripes. Um, I got a green sharpie just because I've got little specks of green. So and I'm only going to do it real lightly. And only to this, this top brown. Again, not something that you have to do, but I think it helps with the silhouette. And that's it. That's the smallmouth Dorito fly. You know, tie one up, give it a shot. If nothing else gives you a, an excuse to, to eat some snacks. And thanks for watching.